think in programming my inaugural season for the National Ballet of Canada, it was really important for me to acknowledge the balance of the classical and the contemporary work that the company has traditionally done. I also wanted to include a lot of works for the full company because these artists have been starved for so long because of the pandemic. It was important to bring a sense of community back to the stage. When looking at the first season for the National Ballet of Canada, there were themes that kept reappearing, themes of collaboration, uh, innovation, and also just new choreographic voices that perhaps hadn't had a moment or any stage time in Toronto. In looking at those people, Alonzo King really stood out to me as someone who's been running his own company for 40 years, who has a body of work that's just immense. I really want positive, impactful people in the studio to work with my dancers. And Alonzo is one of those people. We had many discussions around what would the right first date be, and we landed on the collective agreement. He felt like, as a big ensemble work, it would really allow him to get to know the dancers, all of our dancers. The National Ballet of Canada didn't have any David Dawson in their repertoire and it was really important as someone that I know and respect so much and really understand how his work can help artists to grow. I actually saw the premiere of Anima Animus when it was at the festival in San Francisco and I remember just being so moved by the experience, by the music, by the expansiveness of the dancers. He always says that his work changes dancers and I, and I believe that to be true. Rena Butler was someone that I had commissioned in my previous company and I'd already begun a relationship with her as a director and a choreographer. She has such a curiosity in all disciplines and is always pushing herself to learn something new. In looking at the National Ballet of Canada and how I could start to bring up new choreographic voices to the repertoire, Rena for me was an obvious choice. So I first encountered the work of Vanessa Montoya when the National Ballet of Canada did a piece of hers at Harbourfront. I was blown away. She has an incredible instinct for duets and partnering and a, a wonderful sense of musicality. And I think that Vanessa has grown so much over the two years since she started making this, it's actually going to evolve into a very different piece than perhaps she even knew it was at the beginning of the process. So the question is, what is it that Wayne McGregor can't do? The man has so many talents, wears so many hats, so intellectual and really so inspiring in the studio for the artists. I know that this project, Mad Adam Project, based on the Margaret Atwood trilogy, has been a long time in its gestation period. And I think everyone is just going to be so happy to realize this dream. There's going to be a brand new score written by Max Richter, who is probably one of the most famous composers working today. All in all, I think it's just going to be such a gift for the company, for the city, for the dancers to feel that their DNA is in this work. And just to say that they made a full length with Wayne McGregor. I mean, the man is incredible and it's going to be a career highlight, I'm sure, for probably everyone here at the National Ballet of Canada. <laughs> Romeo and Juliet it has very specific reasoning behind it and it's very strategic in the fact that we were just so close to fulfilling a run of Romeo and Juliet by Alexei Ratmansky before the pandemic shut us down. And all of that work had been done, everyone was ready to go and it all just halted. I recognize that as an artist, the career is so short and to miss those moments can be so soul destroying for artists and not just the people on stage, everyone around it that has supported it. James Kadelka, probably one of the most important Canadian choreographers working today and someone that has contributed so much to the National Ballet of Canada, to its, to its development of its artists, to its growth as an organization. He is one of the best storytellers. He is so witty and I see that in Cinderella. It's probably one of my most favorite versions and it was important for me to be able to honor him really in that way and to make sure that these ballets are continue to be done. So in the theme of collaboration once again, when looking at how to balance the season and to make sure that we were really representing some of the signature works of the National Ballet of Canada, frame by frame for me was an obvious choice. This collaboration to celebrate the pioneering spirit of Norman McLaren along with Robert Lepage and our choreographic associate Guillaume Cote 
all of these contributions to this interesting and unique piece I felt would be a wonderful thing to bring back and I thought it would be important to represent all of this Canadian talent on stage in a multidisciplinary work. Someone asked me the other day, is Balanchine still important for classical ballet companies to do? And the answer, I think, is yes. Firstly, I think it's really important to see the development of our art form. And Balanchine was someone that just changed the whole path of it. I felt that Symphony in C being a big ensemble work would be a fantastic way to celebrate that legacy. Kenneth McMillan for me has always been a huge idol. Concerto we've not done for many years, but it's something that has a quiet beauty, it has a sense of humor, it also has some really challenging dancing, <laughs> it has some really challenging choreography, which is always great to bring everyone together. It's a glorious celebration of the classical form of the technique, with a cheeky wink at the end. I, I just, it's one of my favorite works. If there's one thing that I really want people to take away from this first season is just the joy that we're back, that we're sharing these experiences together. So I just want people to go away wanting to come back.